I'm Timothy Priscilla. Here's another graph for us to look at in my business calculus class. They want to know over which interval is the function increasing and over which interval is the function decreasing. Realize when stating intervals over uh, uh, increasing and decreasing, it's in terms of the x-axis. You're looking at the x-axis. First of all, increasing means it's rising from left to right. So, all out there, it's increasing. What interval is that on the x-axis? Where does it stop increasing? When you look from left to right, this red portion here, where does it stop increasing? At 5. So it's increasing from negative infinity up to 5. And there's another time that it starts to, uh, uh, to increase. Where does it start back increasing? At what number on the x-axis? 7. I agree, right there. So we're looking at this portion of the graph. Oh, that portion of the graph. So it starts back increasing at 7, and it keeps on increasing. So from 7 to infinity. How many intervals uh, over, out, over how many intervals is the function decreasing? Just one. What's that interval? Right, right here. It's right there. It's right there. Give it to me in terms of the, uh, the x-axis. It starts in, uh, decreasing. Pardon me. It starts decreasing at 5. It stops decreasing at 7. You're looking at that small little portion where the graph is falling. So from 5 to 7. And that's all they're looking for there. Where's the function increasing? Where's the function decreasing? Any questions? And ah, there. Here we're given a function. We're told to find the critical values for the function. We want to find the critical values for the function. Remember the critical values are the numbers that are in the domain of which f prime is equal to zero, or what's the other situation? F prime is undefined. When I look at this function, I notice it's a polynomial function. Polynomial functions are always defined. Every number is in the domain of a polynomial function. Likewise, its derivative is a polynomial, so the derivative for the polynomial is also defined. If it's a polynomial function, you don't have to worry about this second condition. That never occurs. This situation here where f prime is undefined, that primarily occurs with the functions that have variables in denominators <coughs> and square roots. You want to avoid imaginary numbers. So if your function doesn't have a square root, if it doesn't have a variable in a denominator, then that situation there shouldn't happen in most situations. So to find the critical numbers, we need to know where is the derivative equal to zero. In order to find where the derivative is equal to zero, what do you all think we should do? Find the derivative. Find the derivative. So f prime of x is equal to differentiating we get. 12x squared, keep going, minus 90x, I agree, minus 48. And we want to know, when is that derivative equal to zero? Question? Is it at 9? I don't know. I haven't solved it. Let's go ahead and solve this thing. Uh, uh, when I look at these numbers, I notice there's common factor. All of those numbers appear to be divisible by what? Well, they're divisible by 2, but I think they're divisible by 6, aren't they? Mm. Yes, they're divisible by 6. I'm going to multiply 3 by 1 6. That's the same thing as dividing by 
6, okay, so I'm going to divide through by 6. So I have 0 equals a 2x squared minus 90 divided by 6 gives me is that 15. And 48 divided by 6 gives me 8. And this is factorable, fortunately. If it weren't factorable, what would we have to do? If it's not factorable, we'll have to quadratic formula. I guess you could complete the square, but I think that'd be more uh, effort than the quadratic formula. So if it's not factorable, use the quadratic formula. Uh, 2x squared, I'll use a 2x and an x. 8, I'm going to resist that 4 times 2, and I'm going to use an 8 times 1. I think a negative 8 and a positive 1. Does that do it? Yes. Set each factor equal to 0. To give us x equals negative 1 half, that's my first critical number. What's the other critical number? Positive 8 for my second critical number. Any questions there? So right here, I'd say that my critical values are negative 1 half, comma, 8.